So now maybe we can uh, invite uh, the first speaker, Dr. Bin Han. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah, Dr. Bin Han obtained his bachelor's and master's uh, in China and then his PhD in molecular genetics from the Sainsbury lab at the John Innes and uh, also postdoc in the Department of Plant Sciences at the University of Cambridge uh, later on. He returned to China and served as the director of the National Center for Gene Research and the, in the Chinese Academy of Sciences. So he has served uh, in many uh, capacities and also he is known globally for his uh, work, especially on RNA sequencing technology. And uh, we are happy that uh, Dr. Bin Han is here to talk to us. Thank you. Please welcome Dr. Bin Han. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation, uh, for the introduction. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Rajiv for his invitation. I, I have known uh, Rajiv for many years. He's a very nice and active man. Now I know the wonderful place he has been working. Uh, so uh, our institute uh, uh, has been merged with uh, uh, plant stress biology led by Professor Jiang Ka Zhu. Uh, you know, so we, he is focused on the plant stress biology, so we, we may have the, you know, collaboration in the future. And so my lab has been working on the rat genomic study for many years. We are, we are trying to use the integrated uh, uh, genomic and the genetic study to identify the, uh, you know, the complex trait in rice. Uh, as a part of an international effort to sequence the rice genome, uh, my lab contributed uh, sequence uh, chromosome 4, rice chromosome 4, uh, many years ago. And uh, that's why we, we spent uh, uh, many years for, re to, to, for doing resequencing of rice cultivar. And we tried to associate uh, uh, the, the, the genomic variation with uh, a phenotypic variation. Uh, so we, we uh, investigated, you know, the genetic diversity, uh, you know, uh, from the, uh, between the Rupogon uh, wide species and the Katikativa. We found that the, the genetic diversity reduced significantly uh, during the domestication, uh, rice domestication. Uh, so uh, when we try to, to do resequencing, we have to develop the methods uh, to determine uh, the genotype in inbreeding line and also in the, you know, F hybrid rice and also in the white rice because most of the white species has the largest proportion of the heterozygous genotype. So that's why we, we work on the uh, domestic study as well. But uh, yesterday, the, the young already talked about of the welfare of the peppers. So today I'm going to talk on the GWA study. Uh, when we work on rice, we saw that we, we because the rice uh, has a very high quality reference genome sequence, we could uh, do low coverage sequencing to determine the genotype in the large variety uh, for the large uh, cut, uh, rice cultivar, large number of rice cultivar. So we, this uh, method is simply uh, you detect the, the adjacent uh, SNP, then we use the window, the slide window approach to determine the uh, break point side. So this method include, uh, increases the mapping uh, resolution uh, for us. So we extended this method to do the uh, sequencing in other, uh, for other varieties. And uh, this is that we also developed a method to uh, call the, the imputation because the uh, local sequencing, could, uh, uh, we could miss some of the geno uh, genotype in some region. So based on the similarity uh, between the rice variety, we could uh, fill up the genotype uh, in some variety, in some of the uh, cultivar lines. So, uh, from this slide, I can see, you know, the, the missing data can be uh, reduced uh, from 67 percentage to the 2 percentage, but uh, the, the accuracy just slightly reduced. So this is good enough for us to construct a high density of a haplotype map uh, for the GWAS study in RISE. So that's why we proposed that we could uh, develop uh, the integrated methods to, uh, to map uh, the RISE uh, the, the gene, the loci associated with some uh, interesting traits. And uh, this method fully uh, based on the GWAS study and uh, to integrate with the ex expressional profiling and also the annotation data 
and the mutants uh, in information and also transgenic study. <coughs> there was a huge of the near line re recombinant inbreeding lines and also other integration lines available, you know, in China and rice community. So we could also in integrate all the data together. Uh, so in, in, uh, in the people familiar to you the uh, map as cloning the technology to identify the gene, but in our lab we tried to collect the uh, natural population, natural uh, different uh, ecotypes or land races of cultivar uh, for resequencing and for the GWAS study. Um, this method is uh, quite powerful because we believe uh, uh, the social mapping could provide a higher mapping resolution for complex traits, and also we could identify multiple alleles for complex traits. And also for the some inbreeding lines, we could genotype once to do re-phenotype many times. And also the information can be directly used for uh, breeding. And, but uh, the, the, the problem is we have a huge gems, uh, gem plasma available in China. So how to select uh, you know, the uh, representative you know, cultivar for sequencing. So we usually, we base on morphology and the geographic distribution and also other phenotype, uh, you know, the, the, there is a, a record, you know, for the, for the collection. So eventually we, we, we sequence uh, more than 1,000 cultivar. And also we tried uh, this, this uh, data set including some uh, the cultivar from, uh, collected from other countries. Now we could grow up all the uh, different variety together uh, in Shanghai and Hangzhou, you know, to do phenotyping and uh, to do the try to, to, to develop methods for the GWAS. And based on sequence, we, see, we found that the rice cultivar can be divided into different groups, mostly Indica and Japonica. Japonica also including the tropical Japonica and uh, temperate Japonica. And uh, the most uh, the genetic diversity between India and Japonica should, you know, there is highly, you know, genetic diversity between the two. So that's why we have to carefully to use the data for the GWA study, because there is very strong genetic populations, uh, you know, bias. And the phenotyping data we collected most based on uh, the morphology and also uh, yielding related component and also physiological then visual. And then we also tried to, to do the phenotyping between Indica uh, separately and also also doing the phenotype together, uh, you know, uh, including Indica Japonica. Okay, this is uh, the first, uh, this was first uh, the, uh, the plot we, we, uh, we got. And this gave us uh, some confidence because the mapping, population, mapping resolution looks very high because this six known gene clearly showed very closely to the uh, text snippet side, indicated the side. And uh, so we also tried, uh, we provide this information uh, you can see from this table, you can see there were most of the, 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 the loci, there was no knowing gene reported, you know, you know, in the 2010. And we also tried to associate the genetic uh, uh, variation associated with the phenotypic variation because we could uh, uh, classify the, the, the gene plasma into different uh, groups. And that if the gene plasma between the same group, we could uh, do uh, the, the de novo assembly uh, based on the gene locus. So we, we, we did this, we based on the 28,000 of the gene locks, we, we identify some genetic variation could, could be associated with the phenotypic variation. And this, we, we could provide the, the more detailed information for the RISE research for the functional analysis. And fortunately, most of the candidate region being confirmed, you know, by other lab and also by my lab. I, I would like to, uh, to, to show some data because uh, uh, for further analysis, because you can see uh, for the one uh, lock is, could be associated with a, a larger green uh, the trait. And you can see there is 11 candidate gene here, but uh, uh, which one could be the, you know, the candidate one. And uh, we found that there is uh, only two haplotype could be associated with a uh, small green and a large green. But only, only the 96 gene showed uh, the significantly the changes uh, in the expression level. So that means this gene can be, uh, because it's expressed in panicle, but uh, in the leaves and other, you know, tissues, there is nothing changing. So we could uh, do the transgenic study. We construct uh, several uh, constructs for transgenic study. You can see clearly, uh, you know, this uh, the gene due to the 
tandem repeats cause the, the expression level changes. And uh, that's why it caused, this is a gene uh, encoded the uh, transcription uh, factor, uh, on a specific transcription factor called SPL13. Uh, and uh, fortunately, we also get uh, the mutant from the uh, Dr. Jin S. Love in Korea that show clearly this gene being, is mutated by, uh, after implementation, they can restore the, the, the grain size. Uh, we also do the cheap seq analysis. We know this gene could uh, uh, regulate that some of the gene belong to the expansion gene uh, member and also SSR. SRS5 gene, this control the, eventually control the cell size and control the grain, the length and the grain weight. Uh, we also know this gene could be the major, uh, the major QTL uh, control the tropical, uh, control the grain size between the tropical japonica and the also temperate japonica. Uh, we have a nice story uh, to identify the several uh, of the, the, you know, the gene associated with some of the trait. And we also use this information. Some minor Leo, we also did uh, use the CRISPR uh, Cas9 the technology and also integrate other information to identify the several of the, the related genes. Uh, okay. Uh, but uh, for the annotation, this, it is really hard work to do because we usually do the resequence random and the resequence different uh, cultivar. And uh, when we started to do the GWA, develop the method for GWAS study, we also tried uh, to select uh, several different, uh, uh, you know, the uh, gene plasm or extension in the group program and try to do deeper sequencing and to to do the de novo assembly, try to identify the uh, you know, the, the lytic variation useful, provide useful information for the mapping. From this slide, you can see the pangenome data. Uh, if the if rats can, can be uh, classified into six groups, you can see mostly uh, between the japonica, they have, should the japonica con group, they have, should uh, highly conserve the gene content, but uh, between, uh, you know, the rupoga, they should uh, less, you know, gene content. But this is a uh, high number is lower number. Uh, so the the interesting thing we can we uh, we we identify the core the gene set and the dispensable gene set. You can see there are a large number of the gene uh, could be you know very unique to uh, some of the group. So some of the like six different group, the Indica, Japonica, and also the OS and also Rupogam. Uh, in the detail, you can see we have some of the submergence gene. Uh, only can be detected uh, in the Rupoga, you know, and also in some of the uh, also, you know, also the the group. Um, and uh, we also identify some of the uh, uh, little frequency uh, of some interesting the gene. Uh, this example, the the the, the, the blue color uh, indicated the is the allele detected in the reference genome, but other color detected in the other groups. Uh, so this is uh, information really help us to identify some functional analysis variation. Uh, this is the typical uh, the, the data, uh, the, the, you know, the, the you know the variation, uh, analytical variation uh, in the uh, you know VEX gene. VEX gene is really important uh, for uh, related to the grain quality. Uh, you can see we identify seven different analytical variation, and uh, we know we can we do the transgenic study. We should we know the which one could be uh, in a super real allele, which one could be, you know, the, the uh, you know, the good allele to, for rice breeder for the, for breeding. And uh, of course, we detected some, uh, you know, the newly the identified gene in the wider rice species. So it's, uh, I mean, because we, we don't know the functions, uh, we don't know, you know, why uh, this gene be missed uh, in, during the, long time, you know, the uh, domestication. And uh, uh, particularly, you can see uh, some of the, the, the number of the coding gene and many presented uh, in one group, but, but uh, absent in other groups. But there are more than 50 the gene only detected in Indica group, and more than, uh, you know, 83 gene detected in Japonica, temperate Japonica, uh, the family. So this data uh, is also the newly identified, uh, only um, so, in, in, to summarize the data, uh, particularly we, we detect uh, 
more than 10,000 gene uh, could be uh, absent in the Nippon Bar, Japanic Nippon Bar reference genome. And uh, we also investigated uh, extensively the PLV, you know, among the rice accessions. This, uh, okay, uh, now I would like to take this time to, to talk briefly on the rice heterosis study in, in rice. Uh, because uh, rice heterosis, uh, you know, has been, uh, uh, you know, comprehensively studied for many years. But uh, uh, why the FY performed better than you know, their print of the line? And the most uh, uh, the group they are interesting. They work on the single cross, you know, between one print line with another, uh, you know, uh, female uh, print line to another print line. So we believe we needed to do the. Uh, we should have the global view of heterosis from the large number of the hybrid, the hybrid rice. So that's why our approach tried to resequence to sequence uh, more than 1,400 hybrid rice everyone we collected in China, and we try to identify whether there is any common genotype contributing to the uh, heterosis uh, in rice. Um, and also we try to, to, to investigate uh, the genomic structure in, uh, in the homozygous or heterozygous uh, to, uh, for contributing to the rice heterosis. And the strategy is quite simple. We tried, we saw that we could uh, collect enough of the F1 and also their, uh, you know, inbreed the parental line and do the phenotyping as G1 study. But eventually we found that it's really difficult uh, uh, because uh, the parental line is almost top of sex secret uh, for the bre uh, breeders, but they never let us know what kind of the you know parental line they used. Uh, but uh, uh, fortunately, we could uh, determine the F1 genotype and try to predict uh, their parental line the genotype. Uh, this is a paper published uh, two years ago. Uh, we identified the you know the genetic uh, population structure uh, for the G1. And more importantly, we could detect, uh, you know, some of the heterozygous genotype and homozygous, uh, homozygous indicated in red or blue, uh, it could be, you know, in, indicated that they are parental line genotype. And also yellow means uh, heterozygous. So that means we could do, investigate the, the genetic, uh, you know, effect in the F1 uh, variety. Uh, and, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, we could, uh, uh, Predict their parental line based on the gene uh, locus or any the you know the particular region. So that's we predict that they are parental line. Uh, okay, but uh, uh, we when we treated the F1 uh, the F2 population to analyze uh, to analyze uh, the genetic effect. But uh, you will find uh, the genetic uh, the uh, the, segrega uh, the segregation rate is doesn't like the one two. Uh, one to two to one, you know. Uh, uh, so that's why we also generated a, a F2 population from the uh, more than 40 uh, F1 hybrid. So for this paper, we just use the 17, uh, the population, uh, you know, the population. We generated in total more than 1,000, uh, 10,000 uh, the F1, F2 line. And we do the, we sequence each the F2 individual line and uh, we do the, uh, we, we construct a high resolution map, you know, the map and to, to identify the QTL. And also we try to uh, uh, analyze the uh, analytic functions uh, for uh, variation for the, for the candidate gene. And uh, more importantly, we try to evaluate the dominance effect and the uh, phenotypic contribution. Uh, and we try to, to identify some key alleles uh, to contrib for contributing to the hydrosis. And the strategy uh, is, was working very well because uh, people believe that when the male crosses with the female, the, the line is generating the, the completed, completely the hybrid, uh, you know, hetero, uh, heterozygous as the form. But uh, eventually we found that most of the region that still could be the homozygous because the, between the male and the female, there was a large proportion could be should uh, identical uh, in, in the genotype, best the genotyping. And we could fill out some of the dominance, uh, dominant QTL from male line. You can see there were only very few uh, allele contributing from the female line, then eventually contributing to the uh, heterosis in, in, F1, uh, in the F1. 
Uh, this data, we, we map the best QTL, we map the, some of the new new alleles, but most of the are uh, the knowing the, the gene, you know, because in rice, there is an advantage with several of the important the QTL already mapped. Them. And we also identified that the rice hybrid rice can be classified into three different groups, but the best of the, uh, you know, the, the, the method that generated and this is two line, this three lines, you know, system, the two lines, this is between Indica, Japonica, uh, cross. Uh, so, and I would like to, to, to mention that because uh, we, when we work on the F2 population, we use the uh, composite uh, interval mapping method. But if you have the only one cross, this mapping resolution is, is, is a single line uh, sequence data, you can see. Clearly, they show some uh, heterozygous form uh, and also homozygous form. But if you have 17, uh, this kind of the map, you can definitely narrow down, uh, you know, the, map, uh, the mapping region. So our study, uh, we, we did a type of the heading data from the high the and the uh, green number, and also this is, this is a major uh, phenotype for the green year. Oh, okay. This is a, a uh, most important uh, result we detect. This is a plot that showed uh, in total of 474 the gene not in the side identified. You can see from this line, most of the gene uh, related to the heading data, plant height, or panicle, and they showed uh, the dominance effect. But only some one showed a positive dominance effect, some showed a negative. But uh, very few of the, uh, the gene showed uh, you know, over dominance or positive or negative. But uh, uh, for the green yield, the purple plant, you a large number of the, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, the the, plot, uh, the, the data should uh, the over dominant is because they combine uh, this data together. And uh, from this, like I see, it's one individual F1 hybrid rice. You can see only one gene uh, indicated in red uh, contributed from female, but most of the important gene contributed from the male. Uh, including the homozygous form and also the, you know, heterozygous form. So that, that's this is what uh, we we found. And uh, for example, this is a take one in the control the tail angle. Because there is a two only two, uh, you know, the genotype detected. Uh, you can see this slide uh, because the tail angle with the wider tail angle can can show uh, can have the larger, you know, the green green yield per plant. But for the for the for the green green the rice in the uh, unique area with a high density, so the breeder uh, chooses the you know partial dominance the form. It, that's why they choose you know heterozygous uh, genotype. Uh, there is many other data, and more importantly, we found that between Indica and Japonica, there is a ten uh, you know important gene contributed from Japonica and ten from Indica. That's why. The cross between India and Japan can generate a highly, you know, the uh, green yield. But uh, so this is a, uh, the, the gene indicated uh, in upcase later uh, means a knowing gene. With other gene, we, uh, you know, detected, uh, we reported in, uh, firstly in, in, from our study. Okay. Uh, eventually, we uh, we we some. I would like to summarize because for the type of one, the harvest mm -hmm. rice, uh, there was any, the two major gene contribute greatly uh, to the you know overall uh, the green uh, overall performance of the green yield in F1. But for the type C between mm -hmm. and Japanica, there are more gene contributing for the green yield. And uh, okay, I would like to see. In the future study, we really wanted to use this information for the for the breeding, and we tried to uh, achieve the uh, you know the the green yielding level without to do the cross the harvest rice. Uh, for example, this is a there is clearly a genetic uh, dragon from the uh, heading three uh, the gene. This FT uh, the gene knock. You can see uh, there there is only 0.4 percentage of the the variety should the the, the better the haplotype because most of the other variety should you know with a good allele for vaccine but 
uh, you know, other, you know, not good allele uh, for other resistance gene. And then in this, uh, uh, so we, we could provide this information for the breeder um, to do the further analysis uh, to, to for, for their breeding. Uh, okay. Uh, I would like to summarize our uh, study. Uh, in our study in the hydrocid, uh, uh, we, we haven't found any, you know, uh, you know, we, we do not uh, find uh, any heterosis associated with the loci shared across all the, you know, rice line, F1 and the rice line. But there do exist uh, a few gene or loci from female parents contributing to the heterosis uh, within the each group. And also, uh, most of these gene uh, act through the positive partial dominance. Some loci uh, had to be the hydrozygote uh, due to the pseudo overdominance. Uh, you know, we also detected it. And finally, I would like to have, uh, thank my people. I have, have a strong uh, three uh, the teams work on the data analysis, functionality, and the genome sequencing. And I would like to, to think of this guy. He's my PhD student. And he, now he's a, a new professor, a new professor in Shanghai University, was of the head of the department of the biology. He, okay. And I would like to thank some other collaborators. Um, he, mostly, uh, I would like to, to, to thank the Yang Sihua, uh, Wei Xinhua, and uh, Gong Junyi for their uh, you know, collaboration, and the Jiayang, Qifa, uh, the Jinghan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bin Han. For a few questions, yeah. Okay. You showed that the SPL15 genes is uh, responsible for seed size in the first part of your talk. Yeah. yeah. The SPL genes have been uh, proposed uh, to have pleiotropic effects also on plant architecture. It's very interesting genes. For yeah. The question is, do you find any pleiotropic effect from plant architecture in rice? Okay. The first this is the, uh, yeah. Sorry. And the second question, I didn't see the SPL15 gene in your heter beautiful heterosis study. Mm. Would you expect that also this gene would show up in the heterosis study, which ac accounts for heterosis in, in rice? Or did I overlook this gene in this study? Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 uh, I did uh, miss the, the you know, talk on the SPL14 uh, called IPL1. This is only the gene we detected uh, to perform the overdominance effect in F1 hybrid. Because uh, only in the, in, in the 2% of the F1 hybrid rise we detected. So we, we provide this information to the Jiayang Li uh, that they have the recent uh, publication. Because when Jiayang work on the IPL1, they use the, the mutant uh, line because we identify some of the genetic uh, uh, variation, uh, spontaneous variation, will be performed a better the performance uh, for the F1 uh, so I think that's uh, another SP, SPL1 uh, gene uh, I, 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 I mentioned earlier for Chiva study is another is SPL13 because the IPL1 is SPL14. Any other? Okay. One there can give the microphone. Thank you. It is, uh, it is said that, you know, genetic variation is best seen in the non-coding uh, RNAs or, or uh, genetic variation can be best explained through non-coding non genes. Yeah. Could you find any uh, non-coding RNAs uh, associated with heterosis? Yeah. I, I have, you know, we haven't, uh, we did uh, try uh, to identify some of the other genetic variants, including the uh, intergenic region and also including some non coding RNA. But uh, the, the data we haven't, uh, uh, we, we, we need uh, more time to, to, to work on. Uh, one of my students work on the sub analysis in RISE because we, we, we found uh, some of the, you know, in, in interesting data, you know, to be associated with the, the, the phenotypic variation. Congratulations for the nice presentation. Just, I'm wondering about something uh, that, what is the minimum size of the population we require for uh, genomic evaluation studies? Uh, sorry, what the, what the minimum, the population size? The population, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, but the, 
I, I tried to estimate the population size. For the GWA study, uh, you know, 500, you know, the diverse line could be good enough for board mapping. And for the, our, the, you know, uh, domestic change study, we, we see that even more, you know, the, you collected the accessions and, uh, you know, land races. Okay, I think uh, we have to move. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Thank Please uh, give a big hand to Dr.